Hey guys, welcome back to Diesel, where today we're going to do some sandblasting with our power washer. Let's check it out. Alright guys, so it seems like no matter what you're working on, unless you're one of the lucky few that get to drive a brand new car, um, there's always something rusty, right? In this case, I'm working on some rusty body panels for my truck. You might have, you know, hubs or axles or something laying around, especially when it comes to Jeeps, right? They really like to rust. Um, and it's just a pain in the butt to get rid of. So a common process to get rid of rust is just a sandblast. Sandblasting is a common process where you just take something literally like sand, um, just a filtered, screeded sand, dry, and you just shoot it with air, water, whatever you want at your part. And it'll give you kind of the... Uh, you know, it'll wear off your paint and give you that, that sandblasted steel look like you have. And that is an amazing uh, substrate or surface for paint to bond to because it's literally probably one of the cleanest forms of metal. Um, so sandblasting is great. The problem is it takes some equipment. You know, people have big sandblasting cabinets and there's dust, so a lot of systems get rid of the dust. You know, you can have, people have shipping containers, they'll sandblast in. Giant pain in the butt, right? Well, in the last couple of years, a thing called wet blasting or sand blasting with your power washer has kind of come on, right? Um, so we have a power washer. It's literally 2,600 PSI, 2.4 gallons per minute, nothing special. Uh, it's actually given to us. <laughs> so power washers are really common. And then you can buy a kit like this off Amazon for literally, I think, 20 bucks. So this just goes into the end of your power washer gun, like so. And instead of compressed air, like what most people are familiar with in sandblasting, now you use high pressure water to sandblast. So this does a couple things for us. Number one, I think probably a lot of people have a capable power washer um, rather than a capable air compressor. You need quite a bit of air if you're gonna do this with air. Uh, number two, you wet blast. So what I'm really concerned about or why I'm wet blasting these body panels is because if I were to have these sandblasted with just air, the actual friction of the sand beating off these panels would give us uh, a lot of heat. And then with this thin sheet metal like that, you might warp it, right? So with the water, we have, you know, cool tap water coming out and the water will keep this piece cold so it won't warp it, it won't, you know, ding it, tarnish it, anything like that. So this is a really good wet blast. Also, we don't have the dust, you know, if you have a sandblast cabinet, you know, you have like the HEPA filtration system. If you're doing it outside, you're gonna make a lot of dust. So the wet blasting is really pretty nice. Um, it has a couple of drawbacks to it. It's a mess because you do it outside, just like sandblasting is, you know, there's, you can't really see it, but there is like some sand in the grass. Um, you know, water and sand is in my face. I had sand in my hair yesterday when I was doing this. So it's messy, but sandblasting it is. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to show you guys kind of how this works. I'm gonna do it on the body panels. I'm going to do it on that hub back there, and then you guys can see if this is something you'd be interested in. All right, so the way sandblasting works is when it's the Venturi effect. So when you blow your high pressure me or, uh, medium or fluid or whatever you want to call it across a tube like this, uh, it will actually lower the pressure down here. So basically when you blow that water across the tube, it'll create a low pressure and it'll suck the sand or your blasting media up into the tube. So the way it works is you have the tube down there and then you have your tube right here and this needs to go in the media. So one thing, like sandblasting can be an absolutely, it is an absolutely miserable experience. Um, one of the most miserable parts about it is when it doesn't feed the media correctly. So two things, you need to make sure you have a screeded fine sand because if you get rocks or something, they're gonna get caught in here, right? So you need to make sure everything is gonna fly through here easy with low pressure and it's gotta be dry. If this is wet, I actually was messing around with it yesterday. It was wet and it was miserable. So I went and bought a fresh bag of sand cause they kill and dry this stuff. They screed this stuff. Um, and this isn't a nice plastic bag, so it'll keep it dry. So I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna put a little slit in here with my knife um, because water will go everywhere. And then I'm just gonna take that tube and shove it down in there. And now, you know, I'm not really gonna get a ton of water in there if it feeds. All right, so the other thing is, this tube is probably gonna get clogged at some point, right? So what I like to do is I like to keep compressed air on hand. So when this whole thing clogs up, you basically just take the compressed air tube and then you can blast it out like that because you can't use water. It's really hard to get it out. So if it stops feeding media, then you just take it, blow it out, start fresh.
right, so probably five, eight minutes in, got plugged up, and you can see it's giving me some resistance. I think inevitably, inevitably some water will backfeed into the tube and get it wet, so. Good. It's really plugged up this time. Ah, yes. This is what I was telling you guys about. Watch the sand you get. See that? Giant rock in there. We suck in there. So you can get the white silica sand, which is, I believe, like glass from how they blow it, man-made. So it's perfect, you never get that. But it's round bees, not angular. So if you had something that, you know, maybe you were a little more picky about the surface finish, that'd be good because it's not going to give you such a rough finish. I want to get this over with as fast as I can. So an angular bead that cuts really well is going to cut the paint off. That's why I went with just the play sand, right? They do make like asphalt slags, stuff like that, even tougher medias. But again, it's all kind of one of those things where pick your poison. If you buy an inconsistent media, you're probably going to have interruptions like this. If you don't, then you're going to have to wait a long time. Full disclaimer, sandblasting is a job. I don't hire out many jobs. Sandblasting is a job that I love to hire out. I had quoted $200 each to sandblast these panels. That's air blast, so there's some risk of warpage. And really, all I want to focus on is just where the rust is, any loose, flaking paint that you see come off really easy. Um, so I thought for $20, this would be a great opportunity to try this thing. Um, it's definitely done what I needed to do. I don't think I could do this with air sandblasting. And it's summer, so it's not bad out. Um, I'm just going to give them a quick rundown and get the loose stuff off. And then I'm going to primer them with an epoxy coating. Hopefully should last uh, for long enough. I don't need to look perfect. It's not a show truck. It's a work truck, right? Um, what are my thoughts on this thing? I think as far as the Amazon kit, I don't think you're going to get anything more for your money. Uh, there's nothing special. One nice thing would be maybe like a hopper or something to keep the sand force feeding because sucking the sand up is just kind of always iffy. It's always struggled. You know, when you sandblast, that's one of the biggest things. Um, but honestly, for $20 and probably five to $15 in consumables and sand, water, and gas, it's not a bad job. Um, it is messy, you know, it kind of sucks. Really don't like doing this to the lawn. I'm gonna have to go through and kind of rake this out and, uh, you know, water it in, but it's fine. Um, so if you're someone out there and you've got some time you want to kill and you've got a little project like this, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I'll definitely put a link to this sandblasting kit in the description below to Amazon. Like I said, I don't think you're going to find uh, anything different between them. This one came with everything you need. And the actual, the actual unit here that I'll call is built pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. So that about does it for today's video, guys. Uh, I just want to give you guys a short rundown on a good way to deal with rust, especially, you know, with your power washer in the summer, uh, body panels, anything like that. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I would rate this apparatus an 8 out of 10, and I would rate this job a 0 out of 10. I would rate the money that you save because of doing it a 10 out of 10. I'm not thrilled to be doing it, but... $400, especially by the time I do everything on the truck, is a lot of money, right? Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I have, as you guys can see, a lot of sandblasting to do, and I'll talk to you guys next time. This is definitely not a job that you're just going to blow through. It's, it's painful, and it takes a long time, you know, to get everything set up, to get sandblasting, and then to get a large amount of paint off which is why I'm just focusing on the areas that I have that are rusted. I'm not trying to get all this stuff off. My dad told me once he hasn't painted a lot of cars but he's painted a lot more than I have. He said well if it's been on there you know my truck's 94 if it's been on there for 30 years it's probably all right right so I'm just trying to mitigate the rust and I'm really just trying not to spend all day and all night sandblasting this stuff. I just want to get the rust off 
and get it in the shop to sand it down to where I can just move on, right? Got sand in my teeth, sand in my ear, sand on my face. It's not a job for the light of heart. And it's not fun. 